God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Allow me to explain to you all during these few moments the significance of Holy Week, particularly the Sacred Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil. These three days is a one continuous act, one continuous drama in which we experience Christ at the very moment as he gathers his disciples in the upper room, that he breaks bread and pours wine, and he gives us the greatest gift of himself in the Eucharist and in the priesthood. On Holy Thursday night, the tabernacle doors and the, tab the tabernacle doors are closed and the tabernacle is emptied. And we begin that evening as a family of faith and we present bread and wine to be transformed into the greatest gift, Jesus' body and blood. On this night, priests throughout the world also remember and call to mind the great gift that they have been given by virtue of their ordination, that they are another Christ, and that every time a priest comes to this altar, it isn't him, it's Jesus, who is leading his people in the worship and in the, in the reverence and in the official prayer of the church. On this night, on Holy Thursday night, we will sing the glory to God in the highest, the Gloria, and it will be accompanied by bells ringing. The bell tower bells will ring, the bells in the sanctuary will ring, because that is summoning and echoing that this is the great day that the church is going to now experience. On Holy Thursday as well, at the moment when the bread and wine are lifted up, the bells that rang at the glory are silent now until Easter vigil. And so the clacker, the strepitus is rung because it replaces the bells at consecration. To remind the faithful, the bells that are silent are replaced by this stark, stark noise as of the trembling of the earth when the Son of Man gives his life up. And so on Holy Thursday, the liturgy concludes with the Eucharist at the altar, incensed, and we sing those beautiful words from St. Thomas Aquinas in the hymn in honor of the Eucharist, Pange Lingua, O ta Tanto Mergo. And the Blessed Sacrament is taken from the altar, the main altar, from the main sanctuary, and the Blessed Sacrament is taken to another altar, which we traditionally call the altar of repose. And there on Holy Thursday night, people keep vigil. The same way that Jesus left the upper room and went into the Garden of Olives, where he was arrested and taken and imprisoned, awaiting his sentencing on Good Friday, the church takes her bridegroom, which is Jesus, in the Eucharist, and they take him to another place where he is held. And we, we wait for the extreme drama of Good Friday. And traditionally, on Holy Thursday night, Eucharistic adoration and the public worship of the Eucharist ceases at midnight. While that's going on, the whole altar in the church is stripped. Throughout the year, this altar is vested and is clothed with many clothing, with many cloths, rich and noble for the worship of the Mass. On Holy Thursday night, as soon as the Blessed Sacrament is taken to the altar of repose, the altar is completely divested of its nobility, its dignity, and its vestments. And on Good Friday, you will see the stark nature of that altar. The altar represents Jesus. This is why the priest kisses the altar, not only as a sign of reverence that this is an altar consecrated, anointed, it represents Jesus, the rock, the stone, the altar of sacrifice, but also on the altar, that exact place where the priest kisses the altar, there are relics here, the relics of saints. And that's to remind us that when the church was in persecution, 
the church would celebrate in the catacombs on top of the graves or of the tombs of the saints, of the martyrs, of these holy women and men. And so when the church comes out of hiding, when the church becomes the official religion, when the church starts spreading throughout the world, altars would be, in altars would be placed pieces of the bone or fragment of a saint. And the priest kisses that area twice, if you remember, at the beginning of Mass and at the conclusion of Mass. Holy Thursday night is a beautiful way to begin the Triduum. And normally, if it wasn't a pandemic, Holy Thursday was also a time where we would wash the feet of people to remind us that a part of Jesus' coming was so that he would be a servant. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Or another part of the scripture, he says, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to lay his life as a ransom for many. What beautiful moments on Holy Thursday night. Join us as we experience these beautiful mysteries this day, this evening, this day, for this is the day the Lord has made.